Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Ahmad Siddiqui, aka Pakistani Pepper. I'm a high school teacher and Google Certified Educator. Today I'm going to go over how to use Google Classroom to benefit your students and create a digital learning environment. Google Classroom is an online platform that you can use to share materials with your students, create digital assignments, and assess their progress. Google Classroom is used by millions of teachers around the world, and today I'm going to go over how to create an assignment, how to create a quiz, how to provide feedback and grade those assignments, and how to provide materials to your students digitally through Google Classroom. Quick note, on my channel you're going to find many teaching tutorial videos and lighthearted comedy skits. If that appeals to your interests, consider subscribing. Now, let's get started on the tutorial for Google Classroom. Begin by going to google.com. Once you're in Google, you're going to want to sign in. And from here, you're going to sign in to your school's email. At this point, once you're logged in, you're going to go to the top right where it says apps, and you're going to go to Google Classroom. The first time you sign in, it's going to give you, are you a teacher? Are you a student? Make sure you're using it for only for the rules. I have a bunch of classrooms that I already have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button here at the top, which says create or join a class. And I'm going to create a class. And now I can call this anything. I'm going to call this English language 101. I don't really need a section, but if I'm teaching multiple sections of the same class, I might want to do that. Subject, we will call this English, and I'll call it the AP English Language and Composition, and room, I can just keep my room, so 427. At this point, you should notice that your classroom is already made. What you have in front of you are four options. You have the stream, which is basically the list of everything that is happening in your class. You have the classwork, where we actually go to create the materials we post. We'll have the people, and we'll have the grades. Naturally, nothing can really happen until you have people in your classroom. So first of all, this code here is actually the login code for your classroom. So when a student tries to join your classroom, this is the information that they are going to need. When you go to people, you're going to see this option here, invite students. Here, you can add their name one by one and invite them. However, again, that gets very tedious once you have quite a few students. So again, what you're going to do is go to this area right here, give them that code, and then the student can actually log in. So let me show you what that would look like. So the student, once again, logged into their account, and they are going to go to Google Classroom. And just as they did before, they're going to click plus here, and they're going to enter the class code and they are officially in the class. Let's leave this aside for now as we come back to how to actually assign work. Quick note, when using Google Classroom, make sure you use both your students and yours G Suite for Education emails. It only requires your school leader or district leader to get in contact with Google and they'll be ultimately registered and a lot of places actually have that facility without knowing they do. So check with your school leader first. However, do not use yours or your students' personal Gmails, as that is against Google's policy since it is a privacy threat. So, again, only use G Suite for Education Gmails. When you go to classwork, there are five basic categories that you can assign to your students. Assignment, quiz assignment, question, material, and reuse post. So let's begin with the most natural order. You can't actually create an assignment until you haven't given something to your students. So let's begin with the bottom, material. And here, I'm going to say the entire Romeo and Juliet novel. Use this 
to complete all assignments. And topic, I'll create one. I will say Shakespeare. Shakespeare, yeah. <laughs> now, the entire Romeo and Juliet novel, if I want to share this with my students, I have a couple of options. I can attach it from my computer. I can add it from my drive. I can send them a YouTube video or I can link it. In this case, I'm actually going to link it and I'm going to go to complete Romeo and Juliet PDF. And what we see here is the complete Romeo and Juliet PDF. So I'm just going to go ahead and link that. And that right there is posted for them for any future reference under Shakespeare. Now let's get to the fun. I am going to post an assignment. This time I'm going to say Romeo and Juliet short answer questions. Answer these questions as you read the text. This is going to be a small assignment, so let's say I'll make it worth 10 points. The due date I'll make to you on Wednesday. And the topic, I'm going to call it, again, Shakespeare. It's still under that same Shakespeare unit I'm playing. Again, I have these four options. The first one is to add a link from my computer. And I'm actually going to add from my computer a short answer rubric. This is what students can reference for their short answers. And if you notice, it's nice and simple. I only need students to view this file, not edit it or make a copy for each student because they can all view it at the same time and it doesn't affect anything. Next, I'm going to go to the drive and I'm going to start attaching some things. The first thing that I'm going to attach are these Romeo and Juliet questions that I had. And if you look at them, there's a space for students to answer each of them just by typing in. But now this is going to be different for each student. So what I want to do here is make a copy for each student. In addition, I am going to attach a link and I'm going to link that again in case they can't find the material. And that's the entire Romeo and Juliet story in front of them. And finally, and this is the part that I really like, if my students do not um, read well alone, what I actually do is I add a video, act one, scene one, summary, because that's where my questions focus. So I give them a detailed video to watch. So they have a rubric to see what their answers should look like. They have the actual document that they can type in. They have the link to the text itself, and they have a YouTube video that they can watch before they do it. So I will say, use the video to guide your answers and the rubric to self-assess before submitting. Now suddenly, students have no reason to not do well, relatively okay on this assignment. And again, I assigned it for January 22nd, so I'll just go ahead and click Assign. Every student is receiving this assignment in English 101. Here's the next thing that I can do. I can do quiz assignment. Notice how this actually creates a completely blank quiz for me. And I will call this Romeo and Juliet Act 1 Quiz. And now I will say, after reading Act 1, answer the following questions in the attached form. So this is beautiful because now I can assign this for Friday and what I actually like to do is actually assign it with the due time of when my class ends. So my class ends at 2.50 p.m. So I like to have them just take out their phones and do it right in the class. Once again I'll put it under Shakespeare and this quiz I'll actually make worth 100 points. 
I have to make sure that grade importing is turned on. Otherwise, the grades that go in this quiz are not going to be there. But here's the question. What quiz? When I click on this quiz, it's actually going to give me the option to start making this quiz. And I'll call it Romeo and Juliet Act 1 Quiz. Add the description and title. Now, this is going to be relatively simple. I have to write every question out and create options. Again, that can seem like a lot of work. So what I'm actually going to do is I have saved copies of a Romeo and Juliet quiz and I'm just going to paste those options here. Copy and paste your question. How does Benvolio describe Tybalt and is this an accurate description? Maybe this one I want to make a short answer. And short answers, I don't like to give pre-fed answers because even a little bit change in the answer is going to make it immediately incorrect. I make this required. Go next. Now let's take another question. This is Romeo's recent behavior. And this time maybe I'll make it multiple choice. Now. I have these questions and this time I'm going to go to the answer key. I'll pick the right answer and again I'll make this worth 5 points. This last one was worth 5, short answer. This one is worth 5. I'm still going to make sure it's required. And Let's add one more. This time and just to really mess with my students I'm going to make this one a paragraph and I'm going to make this one worth 90 points. Yeah, and then obviously you can't add an entire paragraph. It's, it's never going to look exactly the same. So you can always add answer feedback, but I like to give feedback individually. So all your changes have been saved. And instead of doing any of these things where you have to send the essay or whatever, now you're just going to click out. And if you notice, this is completely ready. Great importing. You'll realize what that means in a second. And I'll click Assign again. So this is the kind of quiz that I would just have my students do that. Now the students have short answer questions due for homework. They have the novel to reference. They have this. And maybe I just do the fourth thing, where is I create a question. And I will just say, how are you guys liking Romeo and Juliet right now? I can make this a short answer, or I can make this multiple choice. And I can say multiple choice. But either way, I'm going to leave this one ungraded because I kind of just want students' opinions on this. And this one I'll make Tuesday. It's relatively easy. I'll once again put it in Shakespeare. But you can choose to make these small questions as well. Students can see the class summary. You can always turn that off. And I'll ask that question. So now, students have four different things in front of them. If I want to reuse any of these assignments, I could get the fifth option, which is reuse post. And for further, when I go into new topics, I can always create a new topic beforehand. But I just do that while I'm creating an assignment. Now, let's see how a student would see it. Now, if you notice, we are back on the student's page. And notice how it says his stream was updated? Bam! He has four different pieces of classwork that he has due. So here's the entire Romeo and Juliet novel that he can read. The sample student. After reading, he now has the option to answer short response questions. So, my student would look at the rubric. My student would follow the link to the text. My student would watch the summary. And finally, the student would take the sample student questions and start answering. And now my student is basically lazy, so he decides to leave all of Act 1 undone. Notice how its answer is automatically saved. And now the student has filled out the answers. Here's what they're going to do. Once again, check your answers that you've submitted and click Turn In. The student is officially going to submit their answer. Now we go to the next part. The student has a quiz to take. The student clicks on the quiz. 
the student hits submit. Now when they view their score, this is coming out as wrong because again, I didn't give it a correct answer and these two I have to grade by hand. This however, the student also gets wrong. The correct answer is he has been depressed. So the student in total got zero out of a hundred points. Before I show you how to grade the short answers, let's make sure the student finishes all their assignments. Here we'll go to the new question. How are you guys liking Romeo and Juliet right now? This student is clearly not doing well, so he'll do that and he'll click turn in. The student has turned in their response. That is basically everything on the student's end right now. So let's go back to teacher mode. Now, when the teacher looks at their student, the student has turned in everything. First, let's start looking at their short answer questions. This time, I see the student's answer. Maybe I like this answer and I like this answer, but I don't like this answer. So I would say something along the lines of, be sure to mention their names next time. As you can see, this shows the students what to do, and when they see it, they'll be able to accept that suggestion. Now, the student didn't do any of these answers, so I would add a private comment. Be certain to complete all responses and resubmit. Right now, the student has a 2.5 out of 10 because they only did two questions fully, one question half, and no non first questions. I've made the private comment, which I post, and now... I return to student with this grade. The student is again going to see this assignment and they can choose to resubmit if they want. And you can choose to accept it if you want. This one I can close. As you can see, the grade has been turned in. This one, I'll have to look at the details. And no work has been submitted. But wait, didn't we attach an entire quiz to it? Well, here is the quiz. Import the grade. And look at this, it imported that the student had a zero because they hadn't really done anything correctly. Now we're going to go to forms.google.com to grade their short answers. When I go back to forms.google.com and I see this quiz that I had earlier responded to, I look at the responses and I see that one student has submitted their response. And I can go to the individual, I go to sample student, and I see that this one, eh, it looks a little bit different. He's got a little bit of it. So maybe I can say it's not really detailed, but I can say three points. I don't know. So this one is going to be a zero. And this one they got wrong. So again, that's a zero. Notice how I changed the three. And I click save. Now, when I go back to student work, I'll import the grade. And this time... Notice how his grade was upgraded to a 3. Now, when we go back to the grade book, he has a 3 out of 100 on this. He has a 2.5 on this. And I didn't make this a grade assignment, but makes it clear for me that the student is not liking it. And if I'd clicked on the other options, it would have shown me how the other students are doing as well. So anyway, that's the basis of it. Based on everything you saw so far, you can keep an idea. You can start getting class averages. That's the basic on how to get started with Google Classroom. Hopefully you can follow this and create it for your class. And that's it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please be sure to leave them in the comments below, and I'll be certain to address them to the best of my ability. This is Pakistani Pepper saying peace out, stay happy, and don't forget, sometimes life's best lessons are in the stories we hear least. Have an awesome day, guys.